In the past years, there's been a lot of talk about AI, especially creative artificial intelligence like ChatGPT or Gemini. It's now used in many fields, from Netflix to search engines, and even YouTube itself. Even this video that you're watching was suggested to you by an AI. But have you ever wondered when they started using artificial intelligence in computers? Actually, in 1986, with the Sega AI computer, this system is one of the least known and rarest products made by Sega. And it came just three years before the famous Sega Genesis. Sega wanted to compete with the rivals, thus aimed at the education. Just a year earlier, Nintendo had released the NES with Zelda and Mario Brothers and had dominated the market. With a price of $600, the Sega AI was sold with special features like a large touchpad, an 8-directional device and the ability to insert an external microphone. Considering the losing nature of this computer, many games had never been seen or completed by anyone outside the original development team. Most of the software titles came with custom overlays for each game. And games were loaded into the system in two different ways, or a combination of both, either through Sega My Cards or via cassettes. But what was meant by AI in the 80s? One of the most important sources that we have is an article from July 24th, 1986, from the magazine Electronics, which described the Sega AI computer as a computer designed to bring artificial intelligence into homes focusing especially on education for children. The system was built to run programs written in the AI Prolog language. The system could be programmed to handle a wide range of scenarios, from simple conversations with the users to complex natural language processing tasks. This ability to understand and respond to human language made the Sega AI unique and greatly anticipated modern AI technologies, where natural language processing and personal adaptation have become standards. With a NEC V20 16-bit CPU at 5 MHz, it had 512 KB of total ROM divided into various chips, two 64KB chips for the operating system and Prolog, and two 128KB chips for the speech synthesis. Graphics were managed by the Yamaha V9938 chip with a resolution of 256 by 212 pixels. The system was capable of playing PSG and FM audio when equipped with the Soundbox extension. The Sega AI computer was not only an innovative device in terms of hardware, but also for its software, which was specifically designed for children's education. The programs were provided on cards and offered a variety of interactive educational experiences. Some of the most important titles were Robinson Land, inspired by the adventures of Robinson Crusoe. This helped children develop problem-solving skills through engaging activities. And also Gulliver Pocket, inspired by Gulliver's Travels. This program encouraged exploration and learning through interactive stories. And also Arabian Nights, an adventure inspired by the Arabian Nights, offering a series of stories and educational activities to improve reading and comprehension skills. The use of familiar stories and well-known characters made the learning process enjoyable. And also thanks to the fact that the system could say some phrases, this was possible thanks to two ROMs. One of the 128 kilobytes ROMs contained 36 samples of common sounds of the Japanese language, and the other 128 kilobytes ROM contained entire phrases that could be reproduced by the system. And unlike the Sega Master System cards, which could hold a maximum of 32 kilobytes of data, the Sega AI computer could hold 128 or 256 kilobytes of data, and could also reproduce music during loading, including parts of the Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Even though it wasn't a great commercial success, the technologies developed for the Sega AI computer influenced Sega future products, such as the Pico, another educational computer for children that achieved greater success. But now, let's see if it works. Before turning it on, I would like to repair the cassette player. Unfortunately, when I bought it, it was already in this condition, but I think that it won't be hard to repair. 
It just seems like this part has come out of the support. As I suspected, this part had come out of the supports and the spring was no longer in place. I don't think that it would be difficult to repair, but I will still be careful given the rarity of the computer. I'm glad it was just a mechanical issue considering the rarity of the computer and now it's time to test it. But of course, since it's a Japanese computer, I can just plug it but I'll need a power transformer and also before connecting the power supply, I tested with a multimeter the voltages. Fortunately, the voltages are marked on the back of the power supply and it's a good thing the label is still there since I couldn't find any information online. Unfortunately, I don't have any cassette to test it, but I have this cartridge which should be a personal diary program so I turn on the transformer and the power supply and it works it turns on Beside the computer and the power supply, there were also a stylus for the touchscreen, a custom overlay to place on the touchpad, a warranty certificate with a serial number indicating it was valid for one year, a brief introduction manual with tips on compatible tapes model and storage. Unfortunately, all this documentation, including the games, was available only in Japanese. In the manuals, one section is dedicated to the initial setup of the device with detailed illustrations that guide the user step by step. There are also safety warnings, such as not using liquids near the device. Other section provides instructions on how to connect the device to the TV or other equipment. Finally, the manual included a troubleshooting section with tips on how to handle common malfunctions. Like I said before, this is a kind of electronic diary and it's asking me if I want to insert a tape or not and to press the enter button. At the beginning, it makes you choose the date, making you insert the year, month and day. It's asking me if I want to save the settings. And also, how's the weather today? You can choose if you want to talk with the computer or interact on your own and if you choose to interact on your own you can draw with different options for example you can draw different shapes and even without a physical keyboard it's still very easy to draw and write And if I choose the other options, it allows me to talk with the computer. For example, it's asking me if I've done something fun in these days, and if I say yes, it's asking me what I did for fun. So for example, I can answer that I studied. Even if the questions were only how is the weather or what you did today, I think it was surprising at the time to be able to interact with the computer in an almost natural way. Of course, the system was much more limited compared to what we can do today with ChatGPT, but it was still a kind of personal assistant. And I think it was a step towards the AI technologies that we use today. So how we have seen, the SIGA AI computer is a remarkable piece of technology and despite being released in 1986, it introduced cutting-edge features from the touchpad to the ability to interact with the user and adapt to user inputs. Let me know what you think in the comments, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.